It's a beautiful fall right now and our friends at Manscaped want to make sure it's beautiful when your pants fall. Don't let the trees be the only thing dropping their excess leaves and give your trunk the look it deserves with the leaders in male grooming and their fourth generation performance package. Boys, get your baby makers ready for a cuffing season like no other and join the 4 million men worldwide using Manscaped. Make sure you go to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping using the code TRUEFOOTY20. Enjoy the podcast. Yeah, so that's taken up a lot of my time, but it's good to be back. Uh, and a lot of water has gone under the football bridge Ooh, yeah. since we uh, we last did a podcast. In particular, your boys. Are going I've done a full cycle. Really well, you I've, have. Yeah, a full cycle. I was going good. Then they had those two games in the wet where I was like, mm. "What the fuck?" And then <laughs> the two games after that, I'm right back on flag mantle. What's it like being a Fremantle fan right now? It's pretty optimistic, but at the same time, we've been crushed that many times. We can't really get too invested until. Yeah, We're sort of knocking on the door. That's the seven years um, or six years of rebuilding trauma that has uh, <laughs> that's that's speaking there right now. I think I think what you guys have are at well where you're at right now far exceeds anything you've achieved in the last six years. So it's, it is a little yeah, different. F- far much so. We're, like I know we're going to make finals and like mm. have a bit of a campaign, but the true success I'd, for this year I'm needed to see get a bit closer before I can really invest in that. Yeah. But I'm happy with a good f- making finals. We might win a final or two, mm. especially if we make top four, get a double chance. So it's a good spot to be. Cautiously optimistic. Is yeah. that is that how you? If this is going to be the first year of the future, I'm very optimistic because mm. the sort of argument I've made a few times on the podcast, like you need to have that sort of sustained success to have that one year where you break through, everything goes right, and you mm-hmm. do win the flag. So if this is going to be our first year of being in a position of doing that, I'm very optimistic for the next few. True. It, it almost feels like it's come on a little sooner and more rapid you could make the argument uh, either way because we were saying maybe last year this is Jesus a long rebuild um, but then the guys kept getting younger you know what I mean <laughs> so like you, there was you had adversity with players leaving um, while you were trying to rebuild players that you'd recruited to help the rebuild then left um, Jesse Hogan Brad Hill <laughs> um, in particular and uh, Lockie Neal left in that time so yep. there was Ed Langdon yeah exactly so there, there was challenges with that uh, but uh, uh, it kind of almost reminds me a little bit of Brisbane in 19 where uh, well what did they shoot from bottom four which was uh. further than down than you guys and, and finished second but it almost felt like I remember at the time with Brisbane it felt like this is coming on a little bit earlier than we expected they had drafted all the talent in the world uh. they were a very talented young team but um, to shoot right into premiership contention was pr- quite unforeseeable I'd say for Brisbane it feels a bit like that with, with Fremantle yeah I'd agree probably not as to the same extent as Brisbane, but that is a pretty fair comparison, like the two teams, like 19 them and us this year. Mm. And if we can sort of have the trajectory they've had to have a chance every mm. year, it's a good place to be. That's a big challenge, yeah, because Brisbane uh, obviously shot up, and I feel like from my observations with teams who show, shoot up unexpectedly, that they, they then have a downfall. Yeah. Whereas Brisbane haven't. So that's the model. That's yeah. the model you got to sort of... Compared to it. like a Port Adelaide in like 2014, or the, even the Dogs the year they won they flag, mm. their following years they sort of... M- Melbourne in now. 18 yep. as well. Yeah, that's another yeah. good one. Is flag mantle real? Like I said, I don't want to concede that it's too real yet but it's a possibility for sure I feel like you're receding into it a little bit because of you're on on camera being recorded is that <laughs> yeah. how you feel or you just it's don't want it's a bit wanna... like well I'm optimistic like I'll fl- hype it up like buy into it but at the same time you don't want to like assume it you got to yeah. like want to be closer to it before you can sort of, of see course. the path there type of thing yeah it, it would be silly if, if you genuinely felt confident that your team was going to at least be in a grand final by round 11 or whatever it was 12 13 you can tell i've closed yeah. out and following it um yeah but at the same time like I, it does kind of remind me of like uh the years the eagles kind of suddenly sprung up un- unexpectedly like 11 15 and 18 it kind of reminds me of that where you, you sort of beat some teams looking fairly good early on but there was a question mark of can they do it against quality opposition yeah which you've well and truly answered that um, beating Melbourne in Melbourne, beating Geelong in Geelong, uh, beating Brisbane in Perth. So that's three of the best. Certainly, was that the top Evan three? Cole. Was that the top three I, last year? No, Port was second. I saw a very interesting picture. I think I sent it to the True Footy Chat. It was about like teams' records against teams in the eight. Yeah, and Fremantle was well and clear above everyone, even Melbourne. Yeah, the Eagles jumped up to about twelfth on that record because we beat Collingwood who sit in eighth. So, <laughs> and then um, there's about six teams or five teams below who haven't uh, who haven't beaten the top eight side yet. I like that ladder. <laughs> yeah. 
But but it is compelling. I I, mean, yeah. I don't have Fremantle necessarily as my, you know. Yeah, they're certainly favorite. not my favourite either. But um, Melbourne still are. Yeah, but the fact that you know if you return to the scene of the G in September, you've you know you've beaten them there this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's going to be our one game at the MCG as well, which mm. is sort of huge for it to be that, beating the premier, reigning premiers mm. and yeah. the favourites this year. Exactly. Where does Fife fit back into this side? Is, is he potentially going to return into the AFL side this week? It's not guaranteed, I don't think. But where, where do you think positionally? Because uh, you, you have the balance of, you know, you, arguably your greatest ever player, if not second, fitting back into a side that is functioning really well. Where does, he, where does he slot into the structure? Is it midfield? Is it forward? I think like a that half-forward flanker type of guy that sort of can run in and crash the midfield and add a bit of extra clearance base to it when you need, but mm. can give you a bit of aerial assault, that sort of thing, in yeah. the forward line. Yeah. Cause Especially if he works on the set shot. But Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's, that's a good call. I think another marking sort of target up forward, that's probably one area that... We'd is. probably be a little tall, though, if we're going to mm. persist with Griffin Logue. You're right, but the thing is with Fife that he is also a ground level player. Yeah. So I feel like you can include him as a tall, but also he's got that ground level ability. But I think part of the thing with our forward line as well is like having those for- pressure forwards and mm. like Fifey. I don't think be no, as no. suited into like being a pressure forward as like a Switter or True. a Schultzy or a Brick who's missing this week due to a couple of beers. Who? Michael Frederick. Oh yeah, right. Is it, I didn't actually catch that. Did you really? Yeah, he had a couple of beers. <laughs> the leadership group decided that's naughty on a six day break. So yeah, right, interesting. He might not get back in the team now. Yeah, I was going to say because back from concussion. I was going to ask you who comes out for Fife. So do you think Frederick? Well, well I think that's by default now. But yeah, but Swickowski's coming back in as well. So yeah, right. that's interesting. Mm. Don't know how they dropped Banfield after that game. True. Yeah, you wouldn't. It's so. Yeah, it's tough. I think, yeah. It's a good luxury to have, though. It is, yeah. It's the first year I could ever say that. (laughs) True, true. Yeah, on the Eagles board, like on Big Footy right now, we do do, like the ins and outs we predict in this. There's so many outs, and we're just like, oh, we actually don't have that many ins to bring in. They all (laughs) suck. Um, So, yeah, it's it's funny to see the contrast. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about the, the latter sort of landscape as it as it stands right now 